Hey y'all, welcome back to the farm. If you're new here, my name is Susie and I wanna thank you all so much for joining me today. I have been working on fall stuff like crazy, but everything's been going to my booth. So for the last day or so, I decided I'm gonna put some fall into my house. So I've got the dining room done and some other places in the house. And this here, this mantle is one of my favorite places to decorate in this house. So in this video, we're going to decorate this mantle for fall. I've got some fun DIYs. And so let's go ahead and get going with it. So this mantle is one of the first things that I threw together with some scrap wood that I had laying out in the barn. It was years ago. I had just got divorced. I was throwing myself into remodeling a house. Had no idea what I was doing. So there's really nothing special about this mantle, but it still means a lot to me because it was the first time that I realized that I could take scrap and turn it into something beautiful. This was at my house before I painted it. And after we moved into this house, I painted it white and it's just one of my favorite things to decorate. Um, first thing I'm going to do is get it all cleared off. It's just a, bunch, a hodgepodge of stuff up here right now. I put stuff up here sometimes when I'm picture, taking pictures or staging, and I never know what to do there. That canister set was a giveaway, and I still haven't heard from Tracy Shoemaker to get these to her, so please contact me, Tracy, so I can get these canisters to you. Um, so we're just going to get it cleaned off and also that um, I'm going to keep the window frame that I had up there for spring because I really just love it, but it's off-centered. It's been driving me crazy since I put it up there. So I'm going to put it in the right position now and we're going to get started. I was inspired to do this by Teresa at Our Green Acres. Um, she did this on her channel, so I wanted to do it. I thought it was super cute. It's gonna be our first DIY here. So I took our leftover coffee from the morning and I just threw a bunch of just regular coffee filters. I paid $1.50 for 200 of them and I'm going to go ahead and coffee stain all 200 of them. So basically I just dip them in the coffee and then I wring them out and I'll lay them out to dry. I don't completely flatten them out. I'll leave them a little bit crinkled up as they dry. After I got them all coffee stained, I've got um, coffee filters drying everywhere. I have all kinds of stacks of them. I put some in front of a fan and eventually they all got dry and we'll start the next step of this DIY. So I kind of straightened them all out and put them into stacks. And I have got a flimsy white coat hanger here that I'm going to uh, basically manipulate into a round um, frame. You want to have a cheap, you know, hanger that's going to be easy to make round because if you get something thick, it's going to be too hard. So this was really easy. And then I'm just going to proceed to put the coffee filters on to the hanger. Now I did discover that about four or five is about the max that you can make a hole with, with the frame. Now I guess you could, you know, hole punch them all and that would be easier, but well, I don't know. I think this way was probably easier. Plus it just had a more natural look to it than a bunch of holes in it. So I went ahead and put all 200 coffee filters on this wreath and I think it might have been too much. I think probably about 150 
would have been good, but I just kept going and it just kept getting fluffier and fluffier. But I love, love, love the natural color of this wreath. Once I got all the coffee filters on there, I just kind of, you know, smushed them up a little bit and shaped them. And then I used some pliers and twisted the coat hanger together, put a little ribbon on there and that's all there is to it i am loving how this wreath has turned out what do you guys think about the coffee filter wreath I did want to keep my window up here that I added in spring, so I just used the ribbon to tie it onto the window, and I just think that this is so cute and farmhouse and rustic looking. Now for my next project for my mantle i have a bunch of scrap wood here and this is just pieces that were left over from my husband building his workbench in his shop he cut them down for me into these three different sizes i sanded them all smooth and i added just a little piece of spindle to the top of them we're going to make pumpkins out of them so these are going to be the stems um I'm choosing three different fall colors here, and then I'm just gonna paint each piece of the wood a different color. These stems were all glued on with Gorilla Glue, and I let them dry overnight, and they are not going anywhere. This is an alabaster white color from CC Caldwell's paint. I love this paint, it's so smooth. This was the first, like, chalk style paint i think this is actually a charcoal uh, paint that i use and i just loved how easy it was to work with this is um dixie bell mint julep and i just love this green color I'm not painting the backs of these i'm painting all the fronts and the sides but this is rough cut lumber so the backs are still pretty rough and um, I sanded all the, you know, loose stuff off of it. But I thought if you wanted to, you could always just turn them around and show the rustic side of them. So I'm just painting the front and the tops of these. And the last color that I'm going to be using is this mustard yellow from Dixie Belle. I cannot remember the exact name of it, but I love this color for fall. I have been using it a lot. Once I got them all painted, I took them outside and sanded them down with my orbital sander. I sanded them a lot and got them really rustic. And now I'm going to embellish them with some IOD molds. This is the Trimmings 3 mold, I believe. So anytime you're using your molds, you want to dust them with some cornstarch. I'm going to just put um, a couple of these embellishments on each of them or put an embellishment on each one of them. I had to open a new pack of IOD clay and you just wanna work it in your hands and then push it into the mold. And it's very easy to get any excess off. You wanna get the back of your molds flat and just run your finger over the micro rim and it easily cleans up so that you can turn your mold out. I 
I'm always amazed at the beautiful detail of the molds when you turn them out. So then I'm just going to glue each of them on to the piece of wood. I don't know why it's not in the frame, but there it is. I'm gluing each of them on. I did some of them on the bottom and I did some of them on the sides just to give them uh, a little bit of detail. If you happen to have a larger project that you want to uh, work on and use these trimming molds, all of this easily locked together. If you notice how they begin and end, you could make a three foot line of these if you wanted to. That's one of the things that I love about these trimming molds. If you wanna add some really cool detail to your furniture and just make it look so much more upscale than it was, these are great to use. This top bond glue is my favorite glue to use. It's very easy to work with. Um, it's very easy to control and it has, it sticks really great too. Now you could absolutely leave these as they are and just put uh, some burlap, I mean, um, some twine or something on the top of them, maybe some leaves on the top, but not me. I want to embellish them even more and I'm going to be used seeing some transfers from that. This is from the Painterly Florals book. This is one of my favorites specifically because of these sunflowers. So I'm just going to put a sunflower on each of them. I did seal the wood with a top coat before I put on the transfers and I will do another coat of top coat over the transfers as well. Oh, isn't this sunflower just breathtaking? I love this big sunflower so much. If you've never used the IOD transfers before, they are so easy to use. You just lay them on your project and you use the tool that comes with them and simply rub until the image comes off on your project. Once you get the image all rubbed off, you want to burnish it in and you can do that just by rubbing the plastic backing over it until it is completely burnished into your project. Now we're just going to embellish these with some leaves and some twine and then we're going to add them to our fall mantle. 
I, of course, love adding books into any decor. I have them all over my house, any kind of vintage books, but I love the reds and the golds for fall. And then I'm just gonna add in a few more things that I have, some pumpkins. I have these cotton balls. I think cotton in the South is very reminiscent of fall. And I also made these cute, little pumpkin stacks from Dollar Tree pumpkins. I painted them in the same three colors as the uh, wood pumpkins and then I white waxed over them and glued them together. And now I'm just gonna finish up this mantle. I'm always really unsure of what to do in the area below the mantle since it is a faux mantle. There's no real fireplace there. And this is in an area that we need to be able to walk through without really running into anything. I have put a chair there before, but it, it just seems to get in the way. So if y'all have any ideas for that, I would love it. I have um, this old like whiskey barrel that I always kind of sit there with th floral in it and a throw in it. So I'm just gonna take out some of my spring florals and put in some dried florals and some fall stuff and uh, put a green throw in here. And uh, that's pretty much it, but I do love this mantle. Um, I sit on the couch and I look at it sometimes more than I watch TV or anything. I just love to be able to even see it out of the corner of my eye. When something is decorated beautifully in your home, you are proud of it. And I am proud of all the work that I do in my home. It may not be everybody's taste, but it is mine and I definitely love it. And I love you guys and thank y'all so much for watching my channel and liking my videos. Y'all just don't know how much I appreciate that I'm able to do this. It is a lot of work, but it means so much to me and I'm so very proud of it. And I thank y'all so much. I hope you have enjoyed this video today and I will see y'all again next week. If you haven't caught these videos, please check out more of my content. Don't forget to like this one and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hope y'all have a wonderful day.